Sunday fun day. Tonight is Sunday fun day movie night. I'm Carrington Gupte, and I have our usual co-host here with us, Mason Gupte, and we have a special guest in the house tonight, Tommy Holman, yes, all the way nope. from out there. In what it? <laughs> Welcome in, Tommy. <laughs> who, who are we talking to? Anybody Damn. in there? Who are we talking to anyway? His eyes are pretty dilated. Welcome on. Yeah, my Tommy. friend uh, Dave, Super Dave was over. My friend, I call him Super Dave. He does uh, blow. Oh. That's the only guy I know that does blow, man. You know what I'm saying? That's so good, man. Like, That's, it sounds healthy. He'd be like this. No, oh, man. Dave. <laughs> Tommy, the Thunder Bowman. Welcome in. So Tommy's joining us, like I said, from Indiana. First time guest on the show. Probably will come back many more. So Tommy, let's kick it off with um, just a question here. Give us your favorite TV show of all time. What's something that really stuck to you as a viewer? I like Seinfeld, man. You know, when Kramer used to come out, he'd go you know what I'm saying? He used to drink all them cafe lattes and then uh, he would go into Jerry's apartment all the time with, uh, he just, he just intruded in there. And then all of a sudden Jerry would just have no choice but to hang out with him. He'd eat his food. Kramer was probably mm-hmm. my favorite. Kramer. Kramer's. I liked his hair. Kind of like. Great like toy. Thomas. <clears throat> kind of like. Are we Thomas just thinking with TV shows? That's some streets okay, way. but. Snuffleupagus, he owes me $17. That dude's whack. He lost a bet one time. Yep. Told me he couldn't lose 15 pounds. He, yeah, that's he bad. Lost. He's like he's like 750 now. He's whack. Dude owes me 17 bucks. That's why Oscar's all pissed at him. Fuck that dude. Yeah. Not the best reputation on the streets, it sounds like. For a furry guy, you know, uh, you hate to hear that, man. One character hears, they tell the next, and before you know it, you don't want to be on the streets alone. Hey, I'll tell you what, Cactus Guy. You don't want to go to Sesame Street. Maybe 10 years ago, it was a nice neighborhood. It's it's bad, man. Ooh. Where yeah, you think that's what Dave, I heard. Where do you think my friend Dave got his crack at, man? Mm. Yep. Big bird. Big bird. People don't know this big bird. <laughs> big bird's out there slanging birds. Oh, look at his eyes. You'll see, man. You'll see, you gotta look deep. <laughs> definitely. Sesame definitely Street, gotta see what's show, up. Which, by the way, I heard they cut a couple episodes. HBO Max severed a few episodes of Sesame Street. Not sure why. I know they're doing a lot of mm. cleanup acts to to settle people that like to complain, you know, the cancel mafia, cancel culture. Uh, but yeah, they pulled some episodes of beloved Sesame Street from HBO Max. Uh, did rattle a few fans of the puppet world. Um, but diving into uh, next, so let's jump over to, to Mason here. Favorite TV show of all time and why? Damn. I was thinking about uh, favorite characters of all time, so I, I definitely am not prepared for this. This might take me. Fuck, favorite TV show. Um, I mean, this I wanna, can be like, I, animated, non-animated. Mm-hmm. Oh, you know what? I'll probably go with Breaking Bad. It's probably the best, the best TV show. Breaking Bad. Okay. I thought you were gonna say Care Bears, dude. I was like, damn. <laughs> It was either The Office, Breaking Bad, or Care Bears. So he was close. He was close. <laughs> yeah, for me, I, I've, I've kicked this around a lot, and uh, I can't really decide. I mean, it, to me, it's between Seinfeld, The Office, and I would probably say SpongeBob or Family Guy. That would be my, be my third. Oh, that's good. Family Guys, yeah, that's <laughs> timeless. Um, so those are, those are some of the ones there. Um, Tommy, what is your take on uh, characters? Yeah, I know you mentioned Kramer. Uh, what's some of your favorite characters from uh, from The Office? The Office. Uh, obviously, Michael Scott, because uh, that dude, 
he's racist, man. He has Stanley in there, and he's always talking about how he's going to play basketball and stuff. And there's other people who are white. That play. I mean, Jim went in there, and he was like, you know, he's dribbling down the court and everything, and he stole it from uh, uh, Pam's fat boyfriend. That dude only worked at the warehouse. He was overweight. <laughs> He he sucked. I'll be honest with you. I could have taken him in a game of one on one. You could tell he had no skills. But when but when Scott got out there, I heard they were going to change the NBA logo to him, which I'm in favor for. To be honest with you, that dude, he just had an off night that night, though. If you could tell, he he usually hits those oh, half yeah. court shots. One of them went up in the uh, Christmas rafters. I was like, <laughs> you could tell the pressure got to him. It definitely did. He I don't didn't know even, if the warehouse he didn't was follow too hot. His shot. He didn't follow his shot. He thought they were all going in. That's the problem. Started he did. Stretching. He was going to go off for 40, ah, though. What is wrong with me today? <laughs> Man, that, that episode yep. and then, alone. And then when, he saw, when he saw Ronnie and Daryl. <laughs> yep. Oh, he made Dude, the wrong he, decision. They don't play at the YMCA. And then he went with Stanley instead. Stanley couldn't even. Stanley couldn't dribble a ball, man. He, it was bad news from the start. Who was the oh, one who dropped the chili? Was it Kevin or Stanley? Yeah, Kevin. He could actually shoot too. I went. I played in a game with Kevin one time. I tried to guard him. Buckets, dude. Just nothing Damn. but cotton. That's all I kept hearing. I thought Larry Bird was good. Get a bowl of chili and Kevin Malone, and then come talk. <laughs> Kevin Malone. Woo. That's a character again. So I what, thought he was Carl Malone's brother. Oh, might yeah. as well be with that skill. Um, so yeah, the, the the office is one of those shows where the characters made the show absolutely. And that's kind of the main key topic of tonight is characters, you know, in movie and TV show history, uh, who really just stood out to us with epic <laughs> performances, whether it was just their dialogue, the characters' names. Uh, the adventures and feats that they accomplished in these movies. Um, so we'll bring it back there. Uh, it sounded like Mason was more prepared in that regard for sure, which, uh, you know, we, we said we talked about multiple things. Uh, but, yeah, give us some of your favorite. Um, I was going to say, Tommy, are you okay, man? You're fidgeting a lot. I just want to make sure physically. I had a couple Red Bulls before the, uh, <laughs> before the show. I see his eyes and nose getting close to the camera. He's looking for things. He's He might be pressing buttons. Yep, see? I'm just um, looking at my notes, man. I got notes down, too. So, um, yeah, so give us your uh, some of your favorite. I mean, obviously, your number one and then uh, some of the other, you know, top three, possibly, uh, what have you, of greatest characters and why they were so iconic to you. Les Grossman. So Tom Tom Cruise is Les Grossman in 08 and Tropic Thunder. And um, fuck, Tommy, the Shamrock Scam, everybody knows why he's such a legend. He's so opposite of what Tom Cruise is. You can't even tell it's Tom Cruise, but it's just, it's such a fucking just amazing performance that you go back and you're like, yeah, I could laugh at that every time. Um, number two would be Michael Sarah. Super bad as Evan. And that one's just hilarious because he is might be the most awkward character ever created. I mean, man, amazing. Um, who did I have at number three? I think at number three, I penciled in Uncle Rico. And I had an honorable mention of Motherfucker Jones from Horrible Bosses, <laughs> Jamie Foxx. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Starting with Tom Cruise, I mean... It legitimately took me because there was no, this was before social media was really big. So you didn't get a lot of leaks on stuff. Uh, it took me halfway through the movie to realize it was Tom Cruise playing Les Grossman. And uh, yep. it was, yeah, it's it's a top five performance definitely for me as far as characters go. Um, that entire movie, I mean, you could go on and on. Lincoln Osiris, you got Robert Downey Jr. in there. Um, guys that have just <laughs> that oh Ben Stiller I mean Tug Speedman. oh we talked about that Ben yeah. Stiller is Tug Speedman yeah. that's a great name I mean they thought of fucking oh Sergeant Fourleaf I mean yep. just littered Fourleaf Tabak he wrote the book uh, Tommy did Lincoln you... Osiris is my favorite because he was like 
About to put some crawfish out the patties, y'all. <laughs> Man, <laughs> very the, controversial he's guy. The black actor I've I've seen in probably twenty years, and he's white. <laughs> yep. Best black actor I've seen in twenty years. Yep. I don't I don't break Ted to Ted the movie cut. <laughs> I'm the dude playing the dude trying to be another dude. That's how he got the Oscar right there, Lincoln Osiris just. Back to back performances. He remember that trailer they showed in the movie. Lincoln Osiris was also in that gay priest movie. Um, that was supposed to come out. He had a buzz cut. Satan's Alley with Tobey Maguire. <laughs> <laughs> yep. The beginning of the movie, they're like, "This is the story of guys making a movie about a story that's not even real." <laughs> 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 yeah and i'm like man i just know this is gonna be epic and then yep they get you right off the bat like, wasn't the uh, wasn't the real guy that was black in that movie his name was al pacino yep, <laughs> <laughs> yep that's right jackson is the rapper al pacino he had booty sweat and busting nut bars yep, kept trying to sell selling. his drinks maybe i had some booty sweat before we started this podcast i don't know <laughs> Lord have mercy. That was, and then Uncle Rico said, "Back in '84, I used to throw a pigskin over the mountains, a quarter mile." Quarter mile. Yeah, I believe it. Oh, the way he threw that steak. Oh yeah, he held down X and hit Napoleon in the head with a with a ham steak from (laughs) from Kroger on a (laughs) on a line drive bullet. Looked like Peyton Manning. Mm. It's horrible. Napoleon's yeah. glasses fell off. I think he was riding around with his friend on the back of his bike. I think it was him and Kip. <clears throat> oh, he was no, pulling. Kip, Kip was eating a steak. Oh, oh you're right. Kip was next with, to Rico. He was riding around with uh, Pablo or whatever that other Mexican <laughs> friend name of his was. Pedro. <laughs> Pedro, that's another character. Pedro. Pedro, Pedro, yep. Pedro Pop. Look, son, I don't know what they do. And what, what, where was he? Where the where the principal say he was from? He said, "I don't know what they do down in Juarez." <laughs> Juarez. <laughs> I don't know what they do in Juarez, but around here we got something called pride. <laughs> Fuck. God. Oh, you remember that smoke farmer? Break. Remember that farmer? You guys going for a smoke break? Yeah. You guys got a? Are we doing a smoke break? Oh, I'm holding off till the end because I. <laughs> yeah, I gotta stay. I gotta have a clear mind. Oh, I mean, there's there's digital pens. I just, <laughs> you know, we don't want to be, we don't want to be smoking the room up over here. Um, oh yeah, yeah Tommy, So, give us some of your favorite movie characters of all time. Give us your top three and honorable mention characters. So y'all didn't see what I was doing with the smoke, did you? I was segueing, segueing to. Friday. You remember Smokey the Smoke Dog? Bro, bro. Oh, yeah, <laughs> My mom's downstairs. She may get mad at me. <laughs> but the Smoke Dog was pretty good. He got yeah. he got high and ended up in Debo's pigeon coop. That's not what you want right there. <laughs> nope. He thought he was getting some weed and he ended up getting some angel dust from Hector, dude. You don't you don't go smoking Hector stuff, and you don't go stealing from Big Worm. <laughs> no, love it. That's a great great character to have on the list. I mean, man, you can't go wrong on Friday. <clears throat> yep. And then he had to take a poop in the side of the house and got caught by Izell. <laughs> on the side of the house. <laughs> he said, "How come every time I'm in the kitchen, you in the kitchen?" He sure did. <laughs> Bernie Mac is in that movie too. He wanted some uh, weed from Smokey for his cataracts. <laughs> and then he went over to the neighbor's house and went and fooled around with Miss Parker. Hall of Fame shit right there, oh, man. Right, yep. Yeah, because he was walking down the street and they seen him going and out the. Yep. Yeah. He was supposed to be from the church. <laughs> oh, yep. Yeah. That's how it is. They get so you. They wanted some weed for some cataracts. Those cataracts, man. If you don't smoke weed, I heard they just kill you. 
Got to. You look Man. like you got cataracts right now. <laughs> Let me see something there. <laughs> so what do we got? Who, who do we got checking in at number two? Tommy Bowman. Yes, what do we got? Some other, uh, some other characters here. Favorite movie characters of all time. You know, they could be leading. Sounds like we're sticking with comedy. It's a good, it's a good, uh, you know, wing to it stay in. You could pick another genre, easy. but I mean, yeah. Because I said before, if there was somebody that wants to be like me, and I want to be like, like my twin brother, Denzel Washington, <laughs> we we the same. He's pretty good. We're yep. the same though. We go around, and one time I was out, and there was this, you know, call girl, and I was like, "Hey man, who's that person picking on you?" And there she was like. They're Russians, man. And I was like, don't worry about it, man. I was trained with special skills. You know what I'm saying? And then I went over to this place and I was like, hit, 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 hit. leave their speech alone. And they were like, who is this guy? And one of them was like, oh, we better call for backup, man. So man, yeah, I like Denzel turmoil. because, yeah, I like Denzel because me and him, we, you know, we look after call girls that just need I a. Will. You know, they just need a chance. That's all I, I mean. will say what his character in uh, Training Day, probably probably one of the better characters, probably one of my favorite of all time Denzel Washington characters, Training Day. Absolutely, without a doubt. Um, I think that would be one of his best characters. Uh, he always plays the he always plays kind of the tough guy cop like. Um. But that to me, training day was was because it was funny and it was like serious action. Absolutely, absolutely. Him and Samuel L. Jackson. I think. I think. Oh man, I'm not gonna say it because we're gonna stick with maybe diversity. Oh, Samuel L. Absolutely. <laughs> I mean, I would put I would put Samuel L. A couple of his characters. I mean, uh, Jules Winfield from Pulp Fiction, just quoting the Bible, just <laughs> shooting people. Like, Ezekiel twenty five thirteen. I strike down with great vengeance and furious <laughs> anger. I mean, think about in a in a real After life that setting. That day, I went out and got a real gun. Imagine you just look up from eating your waffles. If that was a real life day, and you're just at that diner, you just hear Jules Winfield yelling, shooting people's kneecaps, quoting the Bible. <laughs> like, no, all bad. He yeah, ended up character. eating that dude's cheeseburger, and he's like. Mm. That's a tasty burger. You a mind if I drink some of that down with your cold Sprite? And he had mayonnaise <laughs> in his mustache. It was nasty. Oh, you don't say no to Jules Winfield with a loaded handgun, man. If he's hungry, feed the man. Feed him. Nope. He's, you know, they don't they don't call it a quarter pounder with cheese. You know why? <laughs> and then that brown guy goes, because the metric system... That's right, Brad. Look at the big brain on Brad. You a smart motherfucker. He said because of the metric system. Well, oh man. Yeah, check out the big brains on Brad. The big brains on Brad. Anytime you go to work and someone's like, nah, man, I think you need to do it like this. Then you go, damn, dude, check out the big brains on Brad over there. <laughs> Not many people would catch that reference as if it's younger people, honestly. But oh yeah, it's it's no, tough today. I mean, that's considered they're on TikTok. They don't know. Yep. If it ain't on TikTok, they don't have a clue. Oh, and then he played. I forget his character's name, but in Snakes on a Plane, I mean, again, another character, an FBI agent battling venomous vipers, no, ten thousand feet no. in the air. I'm gonna talk just. I mean, if there are snakes on a plane, I just jump. Yeah, parachute parachute out. Out. just parachute it out. Call the FAA, make them land. Because they have once that door is open, I think they have to land. If the plane is still operable, you just you're done. Um, I've been watching Beavis and Butthead clips. Those dudes are <laughs> awesome. Beavis and Butthead, another great characters again. Yep, I mean the Simpsons. There's just some great characters. Great mm -hmm. characters over time. Um, but I was going to say a random one that I've uh, watched recently, of course, War Dogs, but Jonah Hill and War Dogs. If you haven't seen that film, Jonah Hill gives He's a got great the best laugh. He's like, 
<laughs> I haven't seen that movie in a while, but it, it's pretty funny. Yep. Yeah, that's a good one. Um, so also on my list, uh, I mean, obviously we talked about Kramer. We covered Les Grossman and Lincoln Osiris. Um, oh, what about the cop on Superbad? Yeah. Bill Hader. Bill Hader. Yep. Bill Hader and Superbad was fantastic. Absolutely. Him and Seth together, really. Uh, the lady was like, he kind of looked like Eminem, and they were like, so round? Because they don't know Eminem's <laughs> like a rapper, too. <laughs> they said so <laughs> round. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, so Bill Hader. Like Jewish smart. guy that's round like an Eminem. They were like scared to ask her at first. That was so funny. They had their notepads and they're both like, so was he like you or was he you? like, was he like us? Like what? And she was like, what are you trying to ask me? And she, like, they finally get it out. His character, uh, Bill Hader in a lot of movies. So Tropic Thunder, he was Tom Cruise's executive assistant in Tropic Thunder. And uh, he got I, real happy when they were going to get a G5 plane. <laughs> <laughs> he said, "Take him to the goodie room." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then he started singing "Poison." He's like, "Smack it up, flip it, rub it now." <laughs> oh, you know what else? I just thought about totally when you said Bill Hader. I forgot about this. The Pineapple opening, Express. yeah, opening sequences of Pineapple Express. He was the military uh, soldier that they tested cannabis on for the first time, and he absolutely blew it. He fucked it up for everybody. They were basing the legalization on him. And uh, we saw how he reacted just terribly. <laughs> but how do you feel about your superiors? <laughs> I feel like a piece of butter up on top of some flapjacks. <laughs> and oh, they keep man. The joint and he got scared of them because they were in spacesuits. He's like, oh, Jesus Christ, man. <laughs> Like such man. a legendary opening scene, yeah. man. Just so funny. Yeah, Bill. Hader. I remember in in Super Bad where they were cops and they were shooting at the stop sign, and then the cop sirens went off, and they yelled "cops" and they ran. <laughs> <laughs> they were the cops. They took McLovin out shooting, and just everybody looked yep. confused at the end of that one. <laughs> McLovin just ran. I just remember they were drinking at the bar, and they're. Uh, radios were going off and the bars and there's like, you guys going to get that? And they're like, eh, I guess we probably should. We are cops. And they <laughs> After they've been at the bar drinking the whole time, like unloading their guns. I think they shot inside the bar. Just, yeah. Yeah. Funny stuff. Funny stuff. Too funny. So I had um, Django on there, the blueberry suit, Jamie Foxx as Django. A lot of good characters. Um, and then I'm going to give you guys a movie to watch if you haven't seen it. Just came out. It's called Day Shift. It's on Netflix. Yep. I've seen it. I've Day seen it as well. <laughs> you have right. seen it? Yeah. <laughs> How about Snoop Dogg as Big John? Man. I love it. <laughs> With the cowboy hat and boots and a sentry gun just walking through the hallways. Wow. And then Dave now, let Frank me ask you guys this: Would you have given? Because um, it was Jamie Fox was the main character, right? Yeah, Jamie Fox and Dave Franco. Okay, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Would Dave you have Franco. given? Would you have given Jamie Fox a second chance? Because I remember at the beginning of that movie, Big John had to vouch. I mean, he Big John vouched hard, but there was a lot of offenses on that rap sheet. Would you guys have let him back in? Obviously, I mean, Dave Franco wouldn't because he had it all <laughs> documented yeah. on his oh. on his spiral notebook in his olive green suit. Yeah. Man, his characters are funny. What was the other movie he was in? Wasn't he in? Uh, yeah, I think he got done when he got his head chopped off, and he was like, "Oh no, man, my <laughs> head!" And he was trying to put it on in the car. Ridiculous. Like, he was better when he played. Mike Pancake. Do you remember when we played Mike Pancake oh, in yeah. the Vince Vaughn movie? A watch salesman named Mike Pancake. Wait, what <laughs> movie was that? It's just a random movie on Netflix. It's like him and I think Tom Wilkinson. Vince Vaughn's in it? 
Vince Vaughn. And... A wa- Dave Franco is a watch salesman. Yeah, <laughs> yeah oh, and his God. name's Mike Pancake, and he just goes door to door selling watches. God, I just know he missed quota. That name, the yeah. job description, that's impossible. Yeah, great movie. But I think he was also in uh in 21 Jump Street, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Or was that James Franco? Oh, in 22. He was in jail in 22. He yep. got arrested. Wow. Because they were That's like. Funny. Speak, oh, actually, man. speaking of Taco Bell, Bell, we shared Taco Bell one time. <laughs> said we shared Taco Bell together. <laughs> oh, God. That's right. So there's a movie, and I forget. I'll have to look it up. But there's a movie where James Franco plays a meth dealer named Gator Bodine. And it's on that. <laughs> it's on. Wait a minute. I think I think I've seen that. Yeah. Because the name cool. sounds so familiar. Gator Bodine. What's the yeah. name of the movie? Don't remember. I I want to say it's like Jason Statham is the main character, I believe. And uh, James Franco, yeah, is just the the villain in the movie. I think I fell asleep during that one because I remember the name Gator Bodine and Franco. But I, I can't tell you how it ended. I probably just sunk into the cushion. <clears throat> and then, of he's course. He's in The Neighbors, too. Remember, he's in The Neighbors, and he, they had that Halloween party, and he played uh, oh, Robert yeah. De Niro on Meet the, Meet the Parents, and he mm-hmm. was walking around petting that cat. That's like, right. Hey, <laughs> Fokker, you talking to me? I just rewatched Meet the Parents probably two, three weeks ago. Um, really funny. Always good to revisit. I like going back and watching old movies like years and years later. So I recently, because of the Prey Predator movie that came out, I went back and watched Predator 1 and Predator 2, which, by the way, Predator 2, not a good movie at all. (laughs) It's just Danny Glover sweating the entire time, just running around in L.A. and like late, I believe it's an early 90s, late 80s film. Just not good. Just it's just predator. You know, they were like, Arnold's not gonna do two, but will you do it, Danny? And he's like, sure. And everybody was like, Yeah, like <laughs> I mean, like if it was Samuel Jackson, it would have been ten times better. But it was Danny Glover, so it just kind of like it killed it. But the I it, to me, the funniest thing was he was legitimately sweating the entire movie. His whole shirt was soaked. I'm like, did they plan that or was he just sweating actually on set? 24 I think he was sweating because he didn't have Arnold to help him. And they're like, okay, Danny, action. And he was like, starts trembling. Yeah. What's my line, man? What's my line? It's, the whole movie is just him like ducking behind old Caprice classic police cars, just shooting at Predator, just yelling and cussing, and people just getting ripped up. Like, yeah, man. I, I could never get into the Predator movies. Like, the, none of them, like the old ones, the new ones. Like, I just. It's just this not new, my thing. This new one is really good. The first one's good. The first one's obviously the best one because Arnold comes and he he actually cuts his sleeves off, which I'm thinking about doing to this shirt. This shirt because I've been I've been going to the gym and these these sleeves are getting tight. But if I cut them off, I'll be like in the woods like Arnold was, and it was awesome because he was like, "Hit to the chopper!" <laughs> and people were like trying to run to like the helicopter to get out, and I was like. You're bad, aren't you? You're bad. I, what what oh. about the guy that just nonstop would just stand and stare into the trees and be like, something ain't right. That <laughs> dude ain't right. <laughs> and then he just got, he just turned around. Instead of getting to the chopper, he turned around on the log and just looked at the predator and got ripped in half. Like, I mm, guess. He was a Native American, too. The only one left. Damn. I have to check with the, uh, Bureau of Data on that one. <laughs> well, let me, let me look. yeah, that. But the new Predator movie. Oh, yeah, that was good. him, the only one. Damn, when did they get Sitting Bull? I'm gonna have to re- revisit a couple things. I missed yep. it. Um, and then Saul. We want to talk about James Franco's Saul character in Pineapple Express. To me, a great another one. Um, and then aside from that, was a uh, wait. Dave Franco was in Pineapple Express. Uh, James, James. Franco. James Franco was the main, the drug dealer. This Rogan comes to his house and pukes on his printer. <laughs> he his was first, all mad. His he first question is like, "Is it broke?" 
<laughs> it was all mad. He was all mad. He witnessed a murder, and he's like, "Pack your shit, <laughs> let's go." <laughs> witnessed a murder. <laughs> God, yeah, such great. chaos, such chaos. It's movies like that, which I mean, again, at the time, to me, The Hangover was probably the funniest movie ever made at the time that I had seen. I don't think I laughed harder in any movie up to that point. Yeah, Alan, Alan was pretty good. He <laughs> made that movie. Complete chaos of scene to scene. You never know what's going to happen. If Mike Tyson shows up, man. He got I'll punched tell you what, in yeah. the face singing Phil Collins songs. <laughs> Looking back, like, yeah, 07, 08, 09, it just felt like some random years, but there actually was some really, really funny comedy mm-hmm. scrunched in that three year window. Like, The Hangover, we talked about Tropic Thunder, Pineapple Express. Like, I just thought it was just a, a random couple of years, but like now, there's really not that many funny movies if you compare I'm this year. And... Dime a dozen. <clears throat> God. What's a good comedy? What's the best comedy you've seen lately? Tommy the Thunder Bowman. Um, probably the funniest thing I've seen in the last four years was Donald Trump's presidency. <laughs> <laughs> that dude is a no talent ass clown, man. Let me tell you. That, that, Biden that four years had some good Biden quotes. Is. Biden has no idea where he even is today. He's like. <laughs> I'll just stop mid conversation and just start talking about something else. It's, but no, there was Trump was like Trump is one funny dude. Like, like he may have been the ass clown of the. He reads the Bible. He is funny. Not his Bible. It is a Bible. (laughs) He's the only person I know that can get out can dodge a question by saying he doesn't know what his favorite book or Bible verse is. Because too personal, just, man. Because just just way too personal. personal. He said, because there's just so many good. Oh, there's so many great ones. They all just speak to me so much. So many great authors. So many great lines. It's hard to just say one. I love them all. I've read the Bible many times. Man, <laughs> this dude is just funny. He hasn't even read the Constitution of the United States. <laughs> I mean, I don't even know if he's going to run. It'll be funny if he does. It'll be. I'll be watching those debates. Those are fun. Yeah, no. So some of the other, um, some of the other movie characters that I had, because there's so the Big Lebowski. Don't know if you guys have seen that. How many of you guys are a fan of the Big Lebowski? Great '90s movie, great late '90s movie. Um, but the characters in that movie alone, John Turturro as the Jesus. The Jesus. The Nobody Jesus. fucks with the Jesus. <laughs> yeah. So let me tell you something, man. <laughs> Nobody fucks with the You Jesus. pull that shit in the semis, I'll <laughs> take that gun from you and pull the trigger till it goes click. Absolutely. And John Goodman was sitting there with his yellow glasses on. <laughs> that movie like is he was so hunting. fucking funny, man. Damn. He's like, man, Rug Pierce would not do this, man. And then he's going on a rant about Vietnam. The other uh, Bashemi's in the background, just confused, looking around, doesn't know what the fuck's going on. When he dumps Donnie's ashes and they go in the dude's beard out on the cliff, and he's talking about <laughs> Vietnam. Yeah, he's like, it's like they said in Nam, man. He's like, Walter, shut the fuck up. Yeah, it just it all goes downhill. I remember the first time I watched that and just laughing because he was so comfortable in that bath with the white Russian, and someone just has to slip a feral possum in there. I'm like, that's that's not relaxing. Like, man, I've as soon as that, that happened, I was like, I'm hooked. I've seen it. I've seen that. That happens all the time. <laughs> yeah, get one of the most funny random movies. I mean, God. Have you seen, have you guys, any of you guys have seen the Nicolas Cage movie? The ex- massive Weight of Unbearable Talent? I ain't watching that. That looks like one huge lump of shit. It's pretty good. It's actually a good movie. Him and, and Pedro. Pedro Pascal from Narcos and Mandalorian. It's a pretty good movie. I don't movie. really like Nicolas Cage. His movies are 
Oh, he's pro- I mean, I would say to me, Nicolas Cage and Bruce Willis are among the t- two worst actors ever. Very bad at Bruce Willis is die hard. Every time Bruce Willis needs some money, he's like, "Hey man, what do you think about making another Die Hard, Die Hard <laughs> 7? It's the same thing with Sylvester Stallone. So that yeah, all oh, Sylvester yeah. Stallone's movies are broke, and then they're like, "I got an idea. Let's say." I have great grandkids and they don't want me to fight, but I go back and I fight Drago's great grandkids. I mean, after a while, you'll be like, look, look, dude. Yeah. Like you got a pacemaker in. Like, you can't go in the boxing ring and fight. Oh, it's ridiculous, man. They got him in there. I mean, there's been several movies did in his 70s. Who, did you see who fights Apollo Creed's son in the next one? Who? Mr. T's kid. Jesus. I don't uh, care about just, Mr. T's kid. Is that kids the are new? just coming the out of the woodwork. Kids are just coming out from all over the place trying to trying to fight Apollo's kids, Mr. T kid, Ivan Drago kid. You know what's gonna happen in 10 years? Ivan Drago's gonna have a great grandkid and he's gonna wanna fight Apollo Creed's great grandkid. Yep. We've seen it, dude. We've seen it in 1983, 1984. You're selling us the same trash. They love it too. Right. They love to do that shit. But like you said, time Stallone retires. I mean, I ain't afraid of no the old last, man. The last, re- actually, speaking of that, did it, I mean? And I don't think I don't know who would have went to watch it. I think it had really bad <clears throat> viewings in theaters. But Clint Eastwood recently made a movie like this this year, as and he's like eighty nine, ninety where he plays like some retired bull rider that just goes to Mexico to like pick up some orphan in Mexico and then like starts fighting like biker gang guys. I'm like, boy, that sounds oh. fruitless. Wait, <laughs> I think that's Liam Neeson. Oh, Liam that's, Neeson that, that, oh. A, Liam Neeson has a movie where he picks up a uh, uh, little Mexican kid and then I he drives him around. He's, yeah, like, he's like, your mom got shot. But it's my job to take care of you. Get yeah. on this truck and I'll drive you across country and I'll take I care of I you just that. like I did in Taken with my wife and all the other same ass movies. Why don't you go get eaten by a wolf, man? Because that's broke. We've seen this before, Liam. You're about <laughs> 70 years old point. and you're trying to do the same thing. Ain't nobody afraid. Are you that's, by chance referring to uh are you referring to the gray when you make the wolf comment? Yep. That was a that let has down. never I, happened to anybody ever. I mean, yeah, it's it's bad enough. Like the odds of you being in a plane crash. I mean, okay, that's that's your big adventure for life. But now you're attacked by a pack of wolves that hunt you across the peninsula as you try to survive. The wolf led him to the cave, and then the mama wolf. What do they call the mama wolf? The gray wolf or the lee wolf came out and was like, "I got you now." Yep, and then he just tapes busted Heineken bottles to his knuckles and just dies in the snow. Probably, I mean, one of the mo- worst disappointing movies, I would say. I'm like, I thought it was going to be some great action movie. Um, which, by the way, I watched that movie the other night, Idris Elba fighting lions, and I got to say. Good stuff. Just, I mean, it was just extremely average. Extremely average. Like, in a sense, there was just like there was really no reason for it to even be made. Like it was just like, <laughs> damn, yeah, that like, is not I what mean, the producers like, hope to hear yeah, when they put. Just like wow. it's just what you would exactly expect. It's just like him and his daughters go to like Africa on a safari trip, and then just lions and poachers, and they just hide, and the lion eventually dies, and you're like, man, this is like pretty much exactly what I don't know. I thought it would be better. Wasn't that great? Wasn't that great? Ever since he got fired from the Scranton office, he took a vacation out to African safari, and he's like, hey, girls, stay in the car. I see a lion. Yeah, I'm getting out of the car, out. and I'll go yeah. see what's going on. Look, man, you're a paper salesman, all right? Get back in the car. <laughs> and then what's funny is, like, the logic in these movies, like, so they go to this village, and it's, like, abandoned, and they just find, like, dead bodies with, like, just bloody slit necks from this lion. And like one of the daughters is like, Oh look, baby goats. I'm going to go take pictures. Just like wanders off. I'm like, no, like just not what you do in that situation. You do not take pictures of goats. 
after you run into a village that was murdered by a lion. And then the you whole see a act- goat in Africa, just go the other way. I'm not, I mean, I'm not, I'm not Steve Irwin. I don't know a lot about animals, but I tell you, if you see a random goat yep. in, in Africa, run <laughs> because something's going to be there. Don't tell your kids, stay in the car, man. I'm going to go check this out. Don't worry about me. I used to be a regional manager at Dunder Mifflin Scranton. <laughs> I I um I'm kind of happy to hear the Beast movie sucked because now we can just rest for a minute. There's never going to be another Ghost in the Darkness. I mean, Michael Douglas. Oh, that was uh, that's still the best animal-driven film to me this day. Val I mean, Kilmer. They even roped in fucking Amrish Puri or whatever. I'm like, uh, dude, yeah. that's can't beat it. Yeah, that was a great great film because it really did have the suspense and the realism that. A lot of these movies just you just see CGI wolves and bears and you're just like, man. I Those know. lions are in the Smithsonian and they're not even as big as they were in the movie. They're probably like as big as me. Oh, I know. Damn. Yeah. They're I not that them. big. I saw them in person. They're like as big as a huge dog. But apparently they went to Savo and they said We may be small, but we're mighty and we'll take this whole town. Let's tag team on these motherfuckers right now. <laughs> Do you guys remember when that was actually set in? Like, what what was the ten year window of when that happened, or whatever, of like real uh, life? It was stories? early early nineteen hundreds, I want to say, because they were building the railroads. Yeah, early nineteen hundreds. Okay. Uh, the railroads across. I was going to say even late eighteen hundreds, but yeah, they were building railroads. Yep. Yep. Man, yeah. Yeah. Imagine getting the operation shut down. You're just the GM of that whole project, and you're like, just call corporate and like, we just can't. We've lost 19 men to lions, and they're just like, wait, what? That's basically what they said. They're like, no, keep fucking making the railroad. Like, just shoot the lions. Like, what's the big deal? And everybody I think one of the lead guys today. left. Oh, one guy left after he saw people get murdered in front of him, dragged away. Like, yeah. And then he came back. That's right. He did, he he came did. Back again. He did come back. <laughs> he came what back the and was fuck, like, man? Oh, right, man. Now that the lions are gone and my life ain't in danger, uh, go ahead and uh, sign me up for that pension again. And you're like, <laughs> Val Kimmer was like, dude, take your shit and go home. Box it up. This is yeah, corporate you can't America. come back after. You can't come back after the lions have been defeated. I mean, that's that's not okay. <laughs> that's bad attitude on his part. Just bad, Michael Douglas's character in that movie. This slicked back hair, just drank whiskey around the fire and then just said a few parables and got killed by lions. I'm like, man, fantastic showing. Which to me, I mean, this is kind of a little bit different, but if you want to talk about some of the coolest voices in Hollywood, I mean, I put Michael Douglas right up there with, with Morgan Freeman. I think Michael Douglas has one of the coolest voices in all of Hollywood for sure. Adam Sandler's trying to do serious movies about diamonds and basketball. Did you see the one about he was a basketball <laughs> recruiter? Yeah, I, I did watch I that watched one. It, yeah, I haven't watched I heard mixed things. Some people said it was just fantastic. Some people said it was just so fake and like just boring. I'm like, yeah. I mean, it wasn't yeah, bad. It was pretty, it was okay. It was, it wasn't, I wouldn't watch it. It had <laughs> oh, one yeah. show. Juancho Hernan Gomez or whatever something he played Fernando for the Fernando Gomez, yeah. Ten days. He's like the lead character, and he's and he's playing basketball in the streets in Timberlands. <laughs> oh, it's, it's a pretty I mean, weird movie, it's but sounds, it, it wasn't it bad. Sounds like uh, Need for Speed or something like the Need for Speed movies are, are just like a Fast and the Furious like tenth version. It's just so fake. You're just like, like look at how this guy got here. Like he's just. Like, oh, it was like 2K. Remember one of the 2Ks, like the career mode, you're just playing in the street, and then they're like some NBA scouts just like, welcome to the league. <laughs> no. Nope. That's, like, that's pretty the- much what it is. <laughs> <laughs> he's out there playing in Timberlands. Their yeah. shoes weren't tied. He had no shirt on. And then he's like, I'd love to come with you, Adam Sandler, but I got to go <laughs> take, my, take care of my daughter. I work construction. That's and pretty much the like, movie. <laughs> yep, and then Adam's like, "I'll give you one shot, man. You can do this. Just come train with me, man." And then he comes to train, and 
two thumbs down, man. Two thumbs down. I mean, what it sounds like is like they didn't a, even get a real player. Yeah, it I mean, sounds like Fernando a, Gomez. Where did he come from? Brad those. Stevens made an appearance in that movie too. Oh, that's right. He wow. was like the Boston head. Coach. Hey, Hernando Gomez, you look good, <laughs> man. Give me a call, <laughs> please. Oh God. It's hard yeah, to take some of those guys seriously on camera. <clears throat> he did sign with Boston in real life for a while, but then they traded him somewhere else. But yeah, there's just some some movie. I mean, to me, like I don't know, Adam Sandler. Like as as he got older, his movies kind of just didn't really stick with me at all. I mean, early '90s he was hitting. Same with Ben Stiller. Ben Stiller just moved to like romantic comedies and just kind of quit. Doing real funny movies after Tropic Thunder stuff. Well, he's been directing more too, from what I uh, heard. Because I I listened to the podcast with him a few weeks ago, and he was telling Bateman and Arnett and those guys on Smart List. Yeah, he's more to directing now, but um, but yeah, I agree, man. I miss some of those those stiller companies. It all started because he did he did uh, Tropic Thunder. He directed Tropic Thunder with and wrote a lot of it. So. It kind of started there, and then he just trickled off. But I guess that's that's what happens over time. Man, if it ain't got these, if it ain't got Barry, Franco, Rogan, Sarah, it's weak, man. There's, yeah. there's not too many funny people out there. Yeah, the movies are not not too many. That's why it's. If I go now, I I could try to go watch like decent suspense movies or something, good thrillers. But the the horror movies are pretty bad today, and the comedies are pretty bad today. So I've been watching a lot of horror movies, and they are <laughs> cheesy, but <laughs> they're funny. I mean, you watch them for like this, just how bad the characterization is, just the most basic lines and dialogue, and like you just like look at them, you're like, ah, oh, so bad. I What's a couple? One yesterday you called have to the say Watcher. What I watched one yesterday called The Watcher. This person literally just watches people from across the street and then goes over and kills them. That's <laughs> terrible. <laughs> well, how many stars would you give it? Man. I think I think it's a goose egg, man. Not even maybe a single a, star. Maybe maybe seventeen percent on rotten tomatoes. No, that's bad. Yeah, that's that, terrible. That reminds me of the the show on Netflix that came out. You know who's the killer right from the first five minutes? It's the dude watching you across the street. Why do uh, I got to watch this for an hour and a half? Yeah, that sounds just terrible to set it up that the way. Girl doesn't mean, even, the girl doesn't even know who's doing the killing. Oh, I was going to ask you this. Karen, I know Carrington's seen this a while ago. It's not new. But it's on Netflix. Have you seen In the Tall Grass? Oh god! Yeah. In the tall <laughs> These grass. people walk out in the grass, and it's a different time zone. <laughs> Who thought of that bullshit? Well, it's so funny. So once you go in the cornfield, and you've been there for a while, you just don't want to leave. Like I just thought that plot was crazy to me. Wow. They get caught up in the cult. They want to go look at the rock with carvings and just be transported. Like man, wait! Isn't this the one where they go in the grass and they like go to different time zones and they hear so each other like saying their time stuff zone the doesn't field. change. There's there's no time zone change. It's just like you go in there. The tall grass is basically possessed. There's this huge rock in the middle, and if you touch the rock, like once you touch the rock, you're a lifer in there. Like anybody that touches the rock. They like they just like look around and they're like, how about we just stay here forever? <laughs> and everyone around them is like, dude, what the fuck? Was well, as soon as he touched that, he said that shit. Like, it's wild. That's funny. Yeah, no that that movie was was pretty sketchy, but you knew what you were getting into going into it. Um, just like what when I, remember nineteen twenty two on Netflix? Did you watch that? The trailer is not very good, but it is it is funny. <laughs> the way the trailer starts it just shows some corn in like indiana it's literally in indiana it just shows some corn and there's like a farmer just drinking iced tea in a rocking chair on his porch and you just hear like crows and roosters and just wind blowing and he's like in 1922 
I murdered my wife. <laughs> and then it just, <laughs> and then it just like starts going into the story and just like, damn, it just captivates you from the beginning. So that was one of the first like Netflix originals uh, a couple years ago. Yep. There yep. was a Netflix show that I watched that was about, uh, actually they mentioned Marion Indiana in it. Mm. Damn. Wow. What was that? I think I have to look it up. Oh, you said that. Greg, Greg Kinnear was in it. He was like this investigator. Huh. And there was this uh, serial killer. And they one of the killings was in Marion, Indiana. Damn. And he went all around Illinois, Indiana, <laughs> killing. And he's trying to fake people out saying it wasn't him. And you're like, look, Tubby, I know it's you. They got him. And he did. He talked about the reenactment of the War of 1812. Hmm. You remember that in Marion, the War of 1812? They did that reenactment all the time. I don't remember that at all. Was that hmm. like a. I mean, I don't remember. There was like the Spanish Mexican War. Was that the one? 1812? Or what is that? This is very disappointing. <laughs> that you guys don't know your history. But yes, there was a war of 1812, Mississippi 1812. Oh, Between okay. like Indians? Indians, and... yeah. Okay. Chief Machinga Misha was one of the Indians. That's Damn. why they named it Machinga Misha Country Club. You know what? Why don't we just change the subject? <laughs> a little bit of history on Marion, a great town, by the way. It does feel like a, it literally feels like a time warp when you step into there. Like it feels like you're back in 1986. You just look oh. around and everything's the same. Yeah. I mean, for me, because of well, when I was born, I just think of the 2000, 99, 90, I mean, that's really what I said. Cause that's the earliest I remember marrying. It's just 99, 98. I mean, that's all I can think of, but. Did you guys know that there's a new Untold out with the guy from Notre Dame? I fucking watched it. I finally watched it. I heard it came out. Did you see it? No, not yet. I'm ready. I'm diving in. Okay. So I'm going to, I'm going to tell you this and you guys can make your own conclusion when you watch it. I actually feel pretty, pretty bad about roasting Manti Teo after watching the documentary because I won't spoil all of it. But one thing one of his teammates said, a walk-on receiver at Notre Dame, was like, dude, this person who was on the other phone tricking him, they're like, they were so good. I mean, they, they were acting as every person in the family, the girlfriend, some uncle, a cousin, the mom, a sister. He was like, it was like a fucking, he's like, they deserve to be a Disney voice character. So now I'm like, man, maybe I roasted Manti too soon. I mean, this guy was up against... I mean, that's just, what the fuck? That's that's crazy. I just don't know why you can't find a girl. On, I mean, it is Notre Dame, I guess, not the greatest place, but why can't you find a girl on campus instead of just catfish Billy over, over here? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he fucked up, man. I mean, I, I I feel dumb for roasting him, but he did have a hand in that decision. But you know, looking back, I see kind of how he got tricked because my God, I mean, it's not often one person doing four fucking voices. <laughs> But did, yeah. he never met the person. Exactly. That's where he's stupid. He believed that they were going to, just because she talked to her, that she existed. So he, uh, okay, he had a bad so role Let's assume dice. now that you don't ever meet somebody. You're not even playing for Notre Dame. You're not going to be like, yeah, man, I got a girlfriend. Never seen her. Never, never hang out with her. But I know she's there because she always talks to me, man. <laughs> yeah you Good gotta mess. wonder why they wouldn't like video chat or like i mean i guess it was a little early for facetime but there was still skype and uvu and zoom and all that shit back then i believe um so yeah it's just it's my someone locally i mean come on man he's a football player and he can't find anyone around 
within five states to meet up with. Yeah, Not that... just any football player, too. The number one middle linebacker prospect out of high school in this class and fucking, I mean, the best linebacker in the country that year in college football. So you're right. Why don't you just – I mean, he could have found a fake Catholic girl to smack that ass. I'm sure he just didn't want to. <laughs> yeah, mind-blowing stuff. Um, some of those things, I mean, there is, there's a lot of crazy, <laughs> crazy stories, um, uh, about athletes. And of course the, uh, the Aaron Hernandez documentary, that was pretty mind blowing. Dude was just out killing people at like three in the morning and then back catching slant routes in the playoffs. That was uh, weird. You <laughs> saw that documentary, right? That was quite a time. You see that Tommy? Damn, <laughs> I'm trying to look up the one uh, show that I saw. It was a horror movie where this girl is driving around and all she she's just being followed by some guy. I think it's just called Alone or something. And the dude oh, just ends up putting her yeah. in a cabin. And then afterwards, it's just like, I'm going to cut you. And she's like, I'm going to get away. And then she gets away. Oh, oh I, I have a great a great movie that you guys need to add to your watch list of random suspense, not really horror movies, but it's basically just and it's it's just a movie about road rage. It's just Russell Crowe chasing a single mom in a suburban around in a Dodge Ram truck, just trying to murder her like in like For a downtown. whole movie. Yep. <laughs> what the fuck, man? I mean, they just have money to waste. I mean. Because there's yeah. no way you thought you were going to get a return on that movie. It's, yeah, it's literally just Russell Crowe with a toothpick in his mouth and a Dodge Ram truck and like a Cabela's bass hunter hat just chasing this panicking single mom in a, in a minivan just trying to murder her because she like flipped him off or brake checked him or something. And the whole <laughs> movie is just him like shooting at people, just cutting people off, just causing destruction. And like somehow he manages to outwit the cops and just murders several people end up in her house i'm like i don't i mean i don't know how this stuff happens but yeah oh i think the show is called blackbird Blackbird. that sounds inspired by a true story this guy goes to jail and in order for him to get out he has to find out if this guy killed anyone in narc and a guy who killed people he killed that girl from Marion. And it's actually, oh. there are two real people in the end that are, are like that. It's called I Blackbird. I, I think it's on Apple TV. Interesting. I might have to check it. that out. Nice. It's actually pretty good. I love a good true crime, anything really. True crime documentary, true crime Yeah, movie. like them William Shatner true crimes, the unexplained. He have you watched those yet, Karen? I haven't, but I was going to ask him, do you watch Investigation Discovery Channel? Uh, or do you know about it? No. It's, okay, it's it's a whole entire channel. The entire network is dedicated to, like, murder mysteries, true crime. And, documentaries, and they have they have documentary shows based around real-world detectives once they're retired, and they go back and, like, tell all their cases, and then they're reenacted and stuff. Crazy shit. Probably one of the best networks, Investigation Discovery. It's owned by Discovery Network. Well, I'll go back and watch it, but listen to this. Somebody hit a chupacabra with their Chevy Tahoe. In the unexplained. And we are just now finding out about it. (laughs) You got to watch it. So, so Tommy and I. The chupacabra is laying in the road, man. (laughs) God. So this is this is the, the the thing about this show. Each show, or I'm sorry, each episode is a different genre, a different story, like many episode. But it's basically just high overview. William Shatner with red watery eyes talking in a low voice about just different hard to believe scenarios. I mean, one's the chupacabra. Um, there's a couple that that I could think of. I don't want to spoil any more, but yeah, it, it gets Off weird. Man. Do you remember Mothman? Mothman, yep. Have you watched those Is movies? Mothman, the Mothman real? Something? There's no way to tell. <laughs> yeah, Just smoke and put that on. 
there's a movie with Richard Gere called like the Mothman or the Mothman Diaries or something. And it's just him driving around, just freaking out in like the late nineties, just trying to solve some supernatural psychologic. That's issue. what it is. That's yeah, the Mothman. Like, man, I'm like what? William Shatner said it's real, man. He was like, Is a Mothman real? Or what did these people see? <laughs> and then he's and then he goes, and then there's these and then there's a camera by, or there's uh, pictures behind him, and he's like this. <laughs> he's a really like dramatic host in that show. It just makes it great. There's this there's this one where these guys like go up to this snowy mountain in Russia called like Dead Man's Pass or something. I mean, and then that's, there's your first indicator: snowy mountain in Russia, Dead Man's Pass. Cancel the flight. Stay home. Drink whiskey. <sighs> It's bad. No, nobody made it back. Nobody made it back. Somebody was missing a tongue. Somebody didn't have a yep. foot. <sighs> yeah, and literally. Nobody like, knows why. No, it can't be explained. There's just people. Some people died from concussions, but there's nothing up there supposedly that could have got them. So. But William Shatner was like, "Is there something back there we should be worried about?" <laughs> there's gotta be. I mean, that doesn't just happen. Like, ah. <laughs> uh, God, yeah. yeah check people, that show out. People make some bad decisions. And a lot of these, even in real life, like I said, events, investigation, discovery, you'll see people, they meet some unsavory characters and they choose to just make decisions to keep them around. And just dark things start to happen. You do not want that, those type of people around. There was this lady who made her Damn. house. There was this lady who made her house a fake old folks home. And she would just poison them, steal their social security money, and bury them in the backyard. And they just found oh, like tons of bodies. That one was crazy. And they were like, she was just a lovely church lady that looked 20 years older than she was. She would just fake preach about how everything was great, and she would feed you soup. And then she would just feed them rat poison, kill them, steal their money, and bury them in the backyard. I saw that. Yeah. I'd be like, I'd be like. Yeah, I'm that's like, what people needed. And people would this just lady, it. she just buried people in the yard. <sighs> scary. Yeah, that episode's scary. You she just would meet a person living on the streets, invite them in and, and say, Hey, this is a recovery government funded house. Whole time there's no ties to the government or state. And then right. they would go with her to the bank and sign over the social security checks to direct deposit into her account. As soon as that was signed, she would go home and kill him. And then she just kept doing that. She probably had three, four people's Social Security coming in monthly. Um, the devil. She had, a, she had a business model running well. That's where Joe Biden signs a check and he's like, here, take this pen. <laughs> the Inflation Reduction Act. Does anybody yeah, know what that's it means? What he was signing. Yeah. Does anybody no. know what it means? No, we're just here to help the country. It's great. We're helping. But I'm going to sign it. Yeah. I guarantee you that paper was blank. Yep. Nothing was even on it, dude. It was. And then also announced spiral hey, notebook. Another three hundred. the same notebook. Dave Franco Ukraine. took his notes. <laughs> Damn. It was the same blank spiral notebook Dave Franco took his notes on when he got mad at Jamie Foxx for killing vampires the wrong way. Yeah, funny. He, he should do more movies. I feel like he doesn't do a whole lot. Or maybe I don't watch them. Or, but funny guy, Dave Franco. My uh, my AirPods are down to 8%. Yeah, we can wrap Catch it up. Catch you later. An hour, hour and 10 minutes. So. Yeah, I man. just keep... I just keep hearing the noise and I'm like, yeah, I got to roll before they die. <laughs>